Good evening, Jeff Sprague with the Allen Economic Development Group. Uh, Doug Arthur um, is handing some stuff out. Doug was actually introduced to us uh, by the mayor uh, probably about 10 months ago on some work that Doug was doing in other communities as it relates to workforce and economic development. And um, we uh, established a relationship with Doug and, and it's really started to snowball and, and show some great results. And, and the, um, the mayor read our uh, report, year in report that we submitted to the state of Ohio and recommended that we present the, the same information to council tonight. So on behalf of the uh, folks in the in the audience, I also have uh, copies of if you want to take a look at this or pass along after that. Okay. Um, Doug, I'm going to pass it along to you. Thank you. All right, so we're here to talk about um, initiative that we're calling um, Link Lime Island County. And we also have a few other uh, logos up there. But just to give you a little bit of a background, um, if you look at the Allen Economic Development Group, um, when I came on board, we, we put together a strategic plan and built within that strategic plan were three goal areas. And, and the first one is working with our existing businesses to do business re retention and expansion opportunities and then looking at attraction opportunities to bring new companies into Lyman and Allen County to, to grow our economy. Uh, the second phase of our strategic plan was really looking at the overall infrastructure. And you mentioned uh, the Kim Trade project uh, tonight. Uh, that's a project that we've been working on with the city to, to extend the water line up to uh, Kim, Kim Trade and Eagle Rail Car for uh, some opportunities up there. And then the third component of our strategic plan is, is workforce. And really that came about because as we went out and visited companies, uh, talked to the presidents, the CEOs, the plant managers, uh, probably the number one issue that came to light was the fact that there are jobs in Allen County that are basically going unfilled and there's opportunities for additional growth in Allen County if we could find the right people to fill those jobs. So through the course of uh, really building our strategic plan, and the introduction that the, the mayor gave us uh, with Doug Arthur uh, allowed us to really pursue this and, and make it a vital part of our uh, strategic plan. So one of the first things that started to materialize, the state of Ohio through Governor's, Governor Kasich's um, leadership created the Office of Workforce Transformation. Uh, Ohio also recognized that we were lagging uh, just in terms of what employers were expecting from a workforce and, and what Ohio was able to fill uh, from a statewide uh, perspective. So what the, what the state provided was an opportunity to become one of six pilot projects in, in the state. We applied for that opportunity and the Allen Economic Development Group was actually selected as one of the six pilots in the state of Ohio to really address the issue of workforce development. Um, <coughs> They divided that up by the Jobs Ohio regions. So our, our pilot project actually represents all of Northwest Ohio. So phase one started last year um, in October. Phase two started as of July 1st. And, and really, if you look at phase one, we, we built the framework around what we're executing off of in, in phase two. The, the whole premise behind it, and, and I gave you, we, we actually handed out a couple things. One is just a, a, the overall snapshot of, of the project. But uh, the second thing that we gave you was this, this park pocket card here, um, which really emphasizes what it's all about. And, and that's the fact that the Link Lima initiative is, is about connecting, growing, and, and th making our community thrive as it relates to, to workforce development and economic development. On the back side of that card, you'll see that our initiative is really focused on being employer driven. I mean, it's all about listening to our employers in our community and, and responding to what their needs are as it relates to, the, to their workforce. And then we've all obviously identified some barriers that, that come into play as, as we link employees up with employers. And uh, Doug will give you a little bit more detail on actually how we're addressing some of those, those barriers. But, um, you know, number one, the, uh, the initiative is employer driven, built around what the, what the employers in Allen County really need from that workforce perspective. Number two is it's, it's linked in 
with the governor's initiative to roll out Ohio, what, what he's calling Ohio Means Jobs, they created a, a workforce portal where they really encouraged Ohio companies to go out and post their job openings. Uh, they've really encouraged uh, citizens to go out and post their resumes with the hope that there would be a marriage between the two. Uh, over the course of time, I think what they realized was if they're marketing this from a statewide perspective, it's, it's not really getting any traction at the local level. So through the course of our pilot project, we've really made an emphasis to use Ohio Means Jobs as that workforce portal. And on the second page of the information that I handed out is the, it, are some of the outcomes that have occurred uh, just recently through this initiative. We now have over 145 companies in the greater Allen County area using Ohio Means Jobs as their workforce portal to uh, post their jobs and actually look for job candidates out there on, on the website. So uh, you know, we've, we've gained a great deal of traction in a relatively short period of time utilizing the, the tools that um, the state has put together. Uh, the third component is really helping employers better match the supply and demand. Uh, and if you look on the third page of the handout that I gave you, uh, one of the things that we looked at were the in in demand jobs that are available in Allen County uh, and really what the structure of those in-demand jobs are. And again, this, this relates right back to our economic development strategy. As we're out talking to companies, looking for expansion opportunities, you know, they're really providing us a list of, of uh, positions that, that they want to grow and the areas of, of that growth that could take place. So we're matching it up with, uh, with the, the demands of, of our local community. And then uh, the fourth piece of it is really to provide the job readiness uh, and, and soft skill component that employers are looking for. One of the first things that we did was convene uh, a, a group of businesses, uh, ask them what, what are you expecting from a workforce or a candidate that's coming into your facility to apply for a job. They pretty much defined what, those, what that criteria looks like and then we really went back and, and built uh, some of the criteria or some of the components of, of Link, Lime, Link Lime Allen County around those, those specific areas that uh, companies were talking about. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Doug. He's going to talk uh, really about items two and three, and then I'll wrap it up with, with item four as it relates to the material that we're handing out tonight. Thanks. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, good evening. I was invited initially uh, by Mayor Berger to come and present some of the projects I've been working on for the last decade to a group of business leaders and community leaders in Lima to see if there was a, uh, if the temperature of the organism was right to try some innovative, uh, creative stuff that would sort of spiked the, spiked the initiatives here in Lima. And the answer was a resounding yes. So we started about 10 months ago beginning a process that was um, geared specifically to up that ante and improve the response in the, uh, in the workforce in Lima. And the idea, as, as Jeff pointed out, that I, I, think you, uh, I think you should have heard popping through is, um, Unemployment is not a job shortage, it's a skills shortage. There are plenty of jobs. The problem is finding the right people with the right skills to match those jobs. And so the challenge that we took on was zeroing in on manufacturing, which is the sweet spot for uh, the Allen County ecosystem with wonderful, wonderful opportunities that are at, at national levels with some of the folks that have made their homes here like Ford and Procter and & Gamble and Husky and Potash. This is, this is something that can compete with any ecosystem anywhere in the country or even in the world in, in a lot of cases. We said let's take that sweet spot and figure out how to make it better. So um, I was uh, graciously invited to be the keynote speaker at this past January's chamber breakfast and share the story of what I had encountered in some other cities like Fort Wayne and Cleveland and Cincinnati and San Diego that might be able to be replicated here. And I, I, I did an uh, interesting little twist 
on a survey and asked a crowd of 450 people to identify the top 10 things that were wrong with Allen County's workforce. If they had to fix things, what would their top 10 <coughs> ranking be? Or more importantly, what were the top three or four? And in the process, as you, as you can see on the sheet, we got some surprises. The biggest problem, and, and I'm sure none of this is news to any of you, but it was an important mandate for all of us on how to prioritize our time. The number one concern about workforce in Allen County <coughs> and in Lima specifically is the perception that this is not a good place to have a job and to raise a family and start a career and build a business. The perception is not necessarily from the people inside Lima Allen County, it's from the people outside looking in. And it causes a significant negative impact when a company tries to import uh, and recruit and bring people in and just for example the spouse says you you want us to move where? I, I don't think so. This is not um, a place that sits on the top of the of the livability list even though it should. So the first problem overwhelmingly uh, rated by the business community at this chamber gathering of almost 500 people was you got to fix the perception that Lima is not a great place to uh, have a business and to raise a family and to build a career. Number two, um, the, the group of businesses said way too many people are presenting barriers, barriers to employment. And those barriers are not minor. We're talking about drug substance abuse, talking about uh, not having stable child care or stable transportation or not having a GED or a high school diploma if that's required, mental health issues, housing issues, all of those issues equal barriers to employment. That, and, and I don't mean to uh, imply this in any kind of negative way, but the bottom line is the employer, is, it's not their problem. They've got a job to fill, they've got a business to run, and if you're not ready to come to them without those barriers, you're really not employment ready. That was the second highest ranked problem with the workforce, according to the business community. The third was soft skills, work ethic. The story that we hear over and over as we talk to businesses, please just give me somebody who will pass the drug test and will show up for work. Um, that's pretty, it's a pretty sad indictment. But when it gets to that level, it's, it's a story that we need to address because the answer from the business community is you need to fix that so that we can hire our local staff. And the fourth thing was, we don't have the right talent with the right skills. So, we set out on a mission to fix and improve those four things. And what we're doing to fix them is, I'm happy to report, 10 months in, it's showing all of signs, all the signs that it's working. The first is building a new sense of community pride, a new sense of um, Allen County and Lima being the place to be. And if you're here, you have home field advantage here. You have opportunities here you would only get because you're part of the Lima Allen County community. That kind of pride is causing us to take very specific actions, starting with a two day expo celebrating the excellence that is the maker community in Lima Allen County called Maker Fest 2015. So for the first time, we're bringing together the students, the employers, the colleges, uh, the uh, teachers, the educators, all to celebrate the excellence of the maker community here, including manufacturing and the skilled trades and robotics and engineering. We're pretty much taking over the Civic Center. We're closing Main Street. We're bringing in two 40-foot trailers with demos of advanced manufacturing automation. We're gonna have the professionals compete well, the kids watch, so we're going to be shooting to figure out who is the best welder in Allen County. And we're not talking about kids. We're going to let the, the uh, folks who make their living doing that kind of stuff become rock stars for a day and get a little bit of attention that they don't normally get. So uh, Make, MakerFest uh, 2015 is the beginning of a journey to change the opinion. We want the hoping 500 plus people each day that show up at MakerFest to come away saying, now that Lima, Allen County. Now that's a good time. That was my hometown that did that. That kind of event done repeatedly changes the talk, changes the message, changes the image, 
and has people all of a sudden able to point to some things new, fresh, and exciting that make them proud to be part of the community. We, uh, we have found a way to deal with these barriers in a very uh, obvious way, you would think. The real bottom line with the barriers is when someone has a barrier to employment, whether it's drug, a substance abuse issue or a child care issue or a transportation issue, we do not want to put them in front of an employer for an interview. We only know it's going to go south. And when it goes south, the employer is not going to be happy, the employee is going to be dejected, and what we needed to do was instead identify those barriers up front and get those people the help they need. So we assembled the experts in each of the barriers, mental health, housing, child care, transportation, um, um, uh, the legal aid folks with criminal records for the folks who come in with a criminal justice background that has problems, or substance abuse with the folks from Coleman and Choice Behavioral Care who can help these folks. And when we, in, when we encounter the barrier right on day one, if they have a barrier, we go get them help. It's not that they're out of the process. They're temporarily, let's go get you fixed so you can come back and be employer ready. It's working. In the first month, and, and I, I don't know how much you're aware of the numbers, but the amount of, the number of people who fail a drug screen is, is embarrassing these days. It's, it's embarrassingly high. Uh, 60, 70 percent uh, fail the drug test. When we did our first month, 40 drug screens, 39 passed the drug test. And one didn't because of prescription drugs that they were on. There was a whole group of people who didn't take the drug test because they knew they weren't going to pass. Well, that's exactly what we want. Let's go get you some help. Get you out of line and go get you the substance abuse help or the criminal background check help. Uh, John Keenahan up at Legal Aid um, jumps in as soon as we say we got somebody with a, with a felony in their record to figure out if they can help them to get it expunged. We connect them with OpenGate, with Sandy Monfort, and get them a, a connection with a second chance employer. But the point is the barriers <coughs> are being addressed before we put them in front of Potash or Husky or Procter & Gamble or Lima Pallet. Be, not as part of their interview. Let's go take care of that stuff before. And it's working. And the, uh, the response from the employers is strong, and the response from the candidates is appropriate and strong. Um, when they say the soft skills are, are missing, the work ethic, we created, as part of the process, a job survival skills workshop, how to survive your job the first 30 days. And we were, uh, we were able to identify a new uh, um, assessment tool called the Acumax Index that in 10 minutes, gives the data that will tell you how a person is wired, how they'll react under stress, how they'll deal with other people. So we put the person through a job survival skills workshop, read, uh, read through with them how to interpret their Acumax index, and add to it strategies on how to survive the job uh, uh, scene. Uh, you probably know this well, but the, the problem is not as tough to place them in a job as to get them to stay in the job. Retention is a huge problem. We're addressing that with a lot of success with Acumax. And we got the founder and owners of the Acumax Index to be willing to come down to MakerFest and set up a <coughs> workshop. And anybody that wants to go through and be evaluated, they're going to do that on, on their nickel for her, uh, j just to spread the word that this is a good assessment tool. The final thing is... We don't have the right talent with the right skills. We went to our friends at Apollo and our friends at Wright State and said, you've got a 40-hour training certification that seems very useful, but it's during the middle of the day. Can you develop something that's a little bit more time-friendly, like let it be computer-based so the person can do it after hours? And instead of it being one-size-fits-all, can it be customized for the employer and our friends at Apollo and our friends at Rhodes created a whole series of new courses that the employers can have funded by the uh, uh, on-the-job training program, so they get reimbursed for it. But it's from the employer's request. Make it so that it doesn't invade the workday. Make it so that it's customizable. So, end of the story. Long, long story, uh, but uh, important for you to hear. This is very specific do, not talk about, let's do. We're doing things that are innovative. They're outside the normal processes. 
And the folks in Columbus have said, check out what's going on in Allen County. Check out what's going on in Lima. This is not your normal stuff, and it looks like it may be a model that others should follow. So that's where we are 10 months in, and um, I'm hoping that as we come back and report to you in a year, we'll have that many more success stories to report. Back to you, sir. Thank you. And in closing, I think it's really about the bottom line. If you look at um, Allen County, 1980, we had 112,000 people living in, in Allen County. You know, we're about 105,000 now. It's really about that uh, employer pie. You know, we, we can't grow our economy by just dividing that, that pie up into smaller and smaller increments. We really need to look for a way to expand that pie, grow our economy. You know, we're really blessed in, in Allen County and in, in Lima to have a number of great manufacturing companies that really are the catalyst and the driver behind our economic development effort. And then we have a lot of great support services, the hospitals and, and our educational providers, you know, retail, but they're, they're really uh, reliant on manufacturing and our manufacturing base and the growth that's related to that. So as Doug said, you, you know, we're really looking at the existing, the existing workforce. How do we make sure that they're aligned with what our employers need? And then also, you know, we've got a great deal of talent that's coming up through our K through 12 systems. And we really need to make sure that they're aware of career opportunities that exist in Allen County so that they stay here, uh, they buy a home, uh, they, they, they build their family here to really grow Lyme Allen County and, and make it a long-term part of their uh, overall lifelong learning and, and careers in, in the community. So really, pre really appreciate the opportunity to bring you up to date on what we're doing from an econ economic development standpoint. Uh, mark on your calendar uh, those two dates in November because, like Doug said, you know, really that's the time we want to pull back the curtains, uh, show the community what we make in Allen County, how it's made, what type of career, the career opportunities there are for you in, in Allen County, and to really provide a, a good mechanism to showcase what we're all about and the fact that we really are real American strength. Thank you. Jeff, what are those dates? Is it November 20th and 21st? That's correct. Okay. Friday and Saturday. That's the weekend before Thanksgiving. And, and we realize there might be a football game that, that Saturday, so we're going to make accommodations for that. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we're going to broadcast that Makerfest. <laughs> right. Yes. Mr. President. Mr. Law. Yes, Jeff, is there a direct telephone number? Anyone want to sit down and speak with you first? Sure. Uh, you can just call our office, 419-222-7706. Uh, 222-7706. And in our phone tree, I think it's the third or fourth, that there's a uh, message here right for Link Lime Allen County. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President. I'm sorry. Mr. Glenn? Yes, I was just going to commend you guys on this because this, this is great that we are working on this problem and this barrel we need to get and I'm glad we identified it now because we got we got a lot of folks who want to get to work and we can get them taken care of before they get to them job sites <coughs> say the mental issues or the drug problem or resume writing what we need to do we got to be chopping on ahead of time and that's how we're going to grow our county you're absolutely right that's how we're going to continue growing and building our country our, our county up by identifying these problems right away before him or her get out there. And that's great and excited about this. Board. I know it can move. Yeah, one of, the, one of the things that we realized early on, uh, the community has a, a number of great assets, a right. number of great uh, community-based organizations and, and partners, and, and this is really about aligning those partners so that we're all, we're all going in the same direction, and, and that direction leads to jobs. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much.